Hey guys, thanks for subscribing to Bonsai Mirai on YouTube. If you like this video, we have a ton more like it on Mirai Live, including weekly live streams, species and technique features, and weekly live Q&As with Ryan Neal. Start your free trial today at live.bonsaimirai.com. One of the more significant acts to control and direct energy when we're refining an elongating species, such as a spruce, is the act of pinching. Now, pinching is, as the new growth is emerging, shortening that new growth just by utilizing your fingertips to remove that soft, supple tip, taking off the hormone that exists in the tip of that new growth, and pushing the energy that's being directed into that new growth to interior shoots and interior buds to stimulate them to grow. And it is a major, major way that we're able to guide the tree's actions and stimulate growth in the regions of the tree that we're seeking further elongation, further growth, or further foliar density. If we forego the act of pinching, then all of the strength that that tree has to produce goes into the tips of those branches. We see elongation, and this is not necessarily a detrimental or a bad thing. However, when we have interior growth, which is naturally gonna be suppressed by that strength in the tip, every tree wants to be a big tree, get long, get tall, get strong. If we allow that to happen, the interior branches stay very weak, never develop, and we lose the ability to stimulate their growth and develop a refined pad that is reminiscent of that greater tree in a miniature form. We have this Engelmann spruce that we haven't been pinching. And when we talk about not pinching a spruce or not managing the growth on an elongating species, there are multiple reasons we would not be managing that growth. Number one, this tree was recently potted onto this Jonathan Cross slab and the root system on it was okay, wasn't stellar, wasn't totally terrible. So we decided to not go ahead and try and get the tree to maximize a ton of energy push out so it could focus on rebuilding the root system as it had just been repotted, okay? And so when we let that first flush go, the tree is distributing after a repot, energy towards the growth, energy towards root development. We wanted it to have as much energy as it could towards that root development, so we chose to not be pinching and altering the state of that, those tips at the foliar mass. The other reasons we would not pinch. Tree, for whatever reason, wasn't as strong last year. We're not sure how durable it is, so we're not, not necessarily gonna test that vehicle knowing we can come back and prune. Tree has, for whatever reason, not had enough nutrition built up over the course of last year. We wouldn't come back and pinch in the spring because the product of this strength was built last fall with the supplemental nutrition and the accumulation of sugars and starches, right? Or life got in the way, I didn't make it when the buds were soft, they started to harden off, did I totally lose a year, what am I gonna do, oh my gosh, and this is a process that we can utilize to regain the shape of the tree and not lose that form that because life got in the way, we weren't able to get to the work. We're gonna be setting this tree up for the styling process by taking away weak branches, branches that don't necessarily have buds at the tip, cleaning out older needles that are gonna get in the way of our wiring process and setting this tree up to be styled and become its first iteration of a bonsai. Now, when we're pruning in the spring pre-push, we're always pruning back to a branch or back to a bud. When we get to this post-hardened state where the, the shoot is still green, but it is solidified, we can now also alter the length of this shoot, but we have to be identifying a bud along the length of this shoot to cut back to. If we just cut indiscriminately at, at some point along this shoot, Chances are we're gonna kill that shoot because on Engelman and most spruce species, there are not a plethora of buds along that piece to be cutting back to and assuming there's something there that's gonna take over as the new apical tip. So we've gotta be very careful if we choose to manipulate this growth. And I'm gonna spread those needles and right in between my scissors is a little brown speck. That is a viable bud. Okay, so you can see how small that is. And I actually have two on this stem. I'm gonna spread these here. Notice there's one on the upper right. Let me just kind of tease that needle out of the way, okay? Notice there's one on the upper right and notice there's one in the middle left. So I've actually got two on this and this is a very strong shoot. You'll see multiple ones form on strong shoots. You may not see a single bud form. on uh, on a weaker shoot, okay? So I can come back and I can snip this tip 
back to just above the butt on the right, or I could even, if I want further length reduction, come back and cut this back to the butt on the left. Now, if you're thinking about ramification, cutting back leaving the two buds would be the ideal move. However, this piece is extremely long in a portion of the tree that we're trying to compress. And let me take you back to the front of this tree. Clearly flow is moving to the right. This piece exists on the left side of the tree. I don't want it to get any longer. And I'm actually gonna take this back even farther. I've got one branch that's quite long and you can see the new growth is out on the tip. This is the one I just pruned and, and showed you those buds. I've got a smaller uh, shoot here and I've got a, a nice medium strength shoot here. They're all occurring from one, two, three from that same junction. These are the junctions right now post hardened pruning. I can shorten this new growth to identified buds or I can actually come back and clean up, and, and I need to be cleaning up. These junctions right now where I have threes and fours back to twos, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tease off. Notice these older needles at the base. I see my new growth right now at the tip. I see last year's needles that exist prior to that new growth, and then I've got all these needles that are third year old needles. And if you go in and try to remove old needles on spruce, and they adhere very strongly to the stem, don't pull them off with force. These just basically fall off when I kind of roll my fingers over them. That's what lets me know that it's a good time, that they're safe, that the tree is no longer using them. We do not pluck needles on spruce just for the sake of plucking needles. We do have these areas where we have a fork right here where there's two, there's a small inner node, basically an eighth of an inch inner node here, and then I have another branch right there. Now in spruce, if we have that inner node, this forms very sustainable ramification. I've got two pieces here, I've got a space here, I've got another piece of ramification here. Unless we want to shorten this branch, there is nothing structurally that needs to be adjusted about this junction on the tree because I've got one, a space, and it forks to two. Whereas in this other piece, I had all three of those occurring from the exact same location on the branch and I do need to take threes and fours down to twos if that growth is occurring from the exact same location. Spruce has to have a viable bud at the tip of the branch in order for it to really grow and really thrive. We're gonna have those branches that don't necessarily have that bud at the tip, that don't have the capacity to grow and contribute, and would be better off being removed so it doesn't continue to consume energy that the more healthy growing portions of the tree need. This is really where we see the cleanup process of an established tree help assist in delivering the energy to the positively growing areas we really want to control and utilize to create a beautiful shape. What's happening here is we're having a lot of strength transition occur, okay? And what that means is these tips that were initially wired right here have not pushed at all, and we've gotten an interior shoot that's pushed to push with a lot more vigor, and it's literally draining these tips of their energy. Now, most of the time, the thought process is, oh man, we gotta cut that back and get these strong. What I would say is, no way. This is where you get that strength coming from an area that's moving water more efficiently. Let's go ahead and just sacrifice the oldies. Oldies but goodies for sure, but when we talk about oldies but goodies, let's go ahead and understand that if we got a newbie, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna replace that with that really nice, strong, interior, vigorous piece of growth, and that's actually gonna be the best possible decision for the longevity of your tree and the strength of that branch, okay? Here's an example of a branch whose structure is still developing. I have good strong tips along here. I see that each of these tips is alive. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean off those older needles that are kind of falling off and hanging on. I've got a nice fork right here where I've got a space. It forks into two, two pieces of viable growth. I've got this inner node and it forks again. And each of these tips are a fork where I have ramification. Fresh bud there, fresh bud there, two buds right there. Nothing structurally to be removed, nothing weaker to be removed, okay? But then let's take a look at this piece. This piece here along a branch, very close to the proximity of these elongating pieces, tip is definitely dead and dying back, needles are falling off. Because I have that strength in that vicinity, I'm gonna take off that weaker piece and really clean up that region of the tree. Once we get a spruce established, recovered, oftentimes we can utilize some of the old wire and carry it out onto those tips that are now really reinvigorated by that process of gaining health. 
And we can also add wire, controlling that growth and giving shape to that new production of elongated foliar mass to really finalize and drive home that design concept we have in our mind. Now let's explore ideal branch pad formation as it pertains to spruce. These nuances are really part of the aesthetic that creates that wonderful final image. So I have this beautiful piece right in here. Okay, I've got this junction where I've got one, two, three. Now typical bonsai knowledge says take off the center one, right? This is what we're always fed in the books. This is totally wrong, okay, totally wrong. Unless we're trying to get a reduction of strength or a reduction of length, we would not want to take off the center one. And even if we want to get a reduction of length, typically if the ramification is better here, we would still save the center one and shorten to the most interior piece of ramification. So if I'm looking at the design, and again, let me orient you guys, okay? This is a branch that occurs around the back here for depth on the side where the flow is elongating to the right. That means that if I'm creating that, and this kind of length exists, and I'm creating that flow, I'm gonna keep the longest piece and the best formed ramification as my highest quality branch. If I know this central piece is giving me that length that complements my design, I now start to look at which of these pieces am I gonna remove. Obviously, if I have a really beautiful piece back in here, like this junction right there, then I've got to create space for this to occur. And even if this is a, a higher quality branch than this piece, which it is, notice the interior ramification on that, notice the number of buds versus this one, just two shoots at the tip, I still want to create the space for this piece to occur. So I go boom, boom, boom in that alternating branch uh, formation to build the best possible branch over the future. Okay, and I've got this piece here. There's no uh, competing branch here, so just a junction of two. I come down to here, and all of a sudden, I've got a small one here and a small one here, and I've got this central stem here. Now, again, I could take out that central stem if I wanted to shorten. We decided that's not what we want to do. I would also take out that central stem if I wanted to reduce strength. We know we don't want to shorten, and we know we want more strength in this tree. Okay, so I've got this piece now on the right side of the branch, this piece on the left. Notice how this small piece that exists in the same area as this is clogging up that space and making that very congested there. So again, when we talk about the stagger, right, left, right again, we start to create the space for those branches to exist and photosynthesize effectively. This is what really guides and dictates our selection process, okay? Now as we move out to the tip, I get to this point here where I've got one, two, three, okay? Now this is an instance where this middle piece is really nice and fine. I've got great ramification on this piece, and I've got this longer piece over here that is starting to create a little bit of congestion with these other shoots. Maybe I take off this, this uh, smaller piece and save this bigger one, or maybe I come back in seeing how compressed this is, take out that bigger one, and now look at how even that branching is here, 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 here. That staggered approach gives me a beautiful, beautiful structure to the pad of my branch, sets me up for a natural fan-shaped ramification. I've got this branch on the outside here. I'm gonna flare that movement out and push that branch out. I'm gonna put my thumb right here and I'm gonna pull in and give this space. Okay, now I've got this little piece here. I'm just gonna push that out a little bit. Now these are confined. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that right there and I'm gonna give space. And just with one single piece of wire, now at the tip, watch this, one last piece, I've given each tip its own space and all of that space is even across these. Now I do need to bring that up, but other than wiring that piece up, with one single wire, I just created a pad with even spacing between each piece of growth. Okay, I do have these two smaller pieces right in here that I could cut back to, but I'm just trying to see, and I've got a bud, I've got a beautiful bud right in the middle of this. Well, that's convenient. So I'm gonna take it off right at that bud right there, and then let me take a look at this one. This feels very medium or even slightly weak, and I would not expect to see a bud on that shoot. I don't have a bud. I have to be disciplined about this. So I took off the strongest one, now I'm gonna go ahead and just accept that that's the length. Kind of tweak that towards the inside a bit. And notice how I'm forming from the backside here where you can see this sort of execution. Notice how I'm forming 
really nice small pads with my Engelmann. When you have a very slender tree, when you have this kind of uh, elegant form and you have this really fine needle, you're gonna be creating in that feminine form smaller, more narrow pads to execute that delicacy of that design. So this is not necessarily specific to spruce. They can have big pads, they can be quite strong and masculine. This is just a design discussion of how I'm handling these branches as a result of the nature of the material. This is a side part to the pruning process. Spruce as a species is very unique in the fact that it has all of these needles in such a tight proximity that it becomes very, very difficult, both in the use of our hand to support the growth, as well as the application of the wire itself to get that wire between those needles and not damage that foliar mass. And the spruce needles are very susceptible to damage. As a result, we have a very special technique that we apply to spruce where we utilize the wire in a tubular formation. By doing so, we're not crushing, we're not breaking, and we're not binding that foliar mass, but we still have the ability for the wire to control the direction and the shape of the branch. This is a very specific spruce technique that is really, really important to learn to maximize the species as a bonsai subject. Okay, notice that I have a bud coming off of the top one coming here and one coming here. So I've got these two laterals here and I've got one that's a little more vertical, okay? Now I can reinterpret the orientation of this and make that vertical piece by rolling the branch a lateral piece, okay? And so when we start to say, which one of these do I wanna keep? Ideally, I would keep the one that gives me the best possible potential for ramification. So if we have that capacity to change that orientation, I'm just gonna take a quick look I notice that I have adventitious buds already on this stronger piece here. The bottom piece, definitely weaker. I don't have any adventitious buds. I'm gonna take off the weaker of the two in that decision-making process, knowing that I've got a better opportunity for a more highly ramified branch quicker, and then I'm gonna wire sort of reorienting that piece to give me that lateral layout. And in spruce, always moving towards that lateral, those buds on the interior are what grow vertically and give us the body. Some of the things to keep in mind as we're designing spruce is the fact that most spruce are alpine species, which means that their structure is gonna have a sharp downward angle. It means that their branches are gonna have a relatively narrow pad. They're gonna be relatively aerodynamic. We're thinking about the impact of snow. We're thinking about the impact of wind, and we're trying to cater our design to show those elements and the way this tree would occur in the natural environment. Keeping your pads thin and aerodynamic, keeping them narrow as opposed to wide, this is what is respectful of those environmental factors and how we represent those in the design of spruce. For this particular tree, obviously literati in every way, shape, and form, and I think a tree that has a very subtle movement to the trunk and not a lot of spectacular features. That simplicity is beautiful, but we have to use the defining branch to create some of the interest that the material itself lacks. And almost inside of this, utilizing that defining branch to be a tree in itself, having a foliar cap almost as if it's an apical region, creating some movement that differentiates it from the really simple form of the trunk. These were some of the ways that we utilize the defining branch to be that aspect of character that the rest of the simple form of the material lacked. Do I remove this and lean to this? And I'm gonna say yes just because I love, that, um, I love that push out of that length and showing that length with that feminine form. I'm not interested necessarily in that big time density, okay? And now we start to see a little bit more of that delicacy creeping into the design of the tree. Over here, right, there wasn't nearly as much growth and it wasn't nearly as strong. So I was just keeping what was healthy and sort of laying it out. And that already formed naturally small pads. Over here, we had a lot, we had a whole lot. And we said, listen, if we're gonna go super long with this, in order for a slender tree to hold that length, I've really gotta shrink down those pads because we can go out here, but if those pads get super big, the weight becomes really, really disproportionate to the trunk and what organically could occur in that design. So as I open up more space and create more negative space, I give myself the ability to have that kind of length in the design. And that was my goal with this branch and with the overall feeling of this tree. And now that you kind of see this piece worked, there's a, uh, two more pieces of wire here. Let me go ahead and wire this out just to see the sleekness of it. And it'll give you a great comparison of what that post-flush hardened pruning has given me the ability to do. I've pruned back some of the new growth. 
I've pruned back to interior buds that elongated, and I've completely removed branches. All three are scopes of the post-flush hardened pruning. So now, with all of the pruning that we've done, this branch looked almost identical to this branch, and now you can see what we've accomplished in this post-flush hardened pruning. Every time we approach a tree, we have to think about the species, the state of development that it's in, how we're gonna be handling this tree at this moment that we choose to put our hands on it. And through this exploration of this literati spruce, we've gained a lot of valuable information that helps us in our bonsai process to further handle not only spruce, but other design situations and horticultural situations that demand an increased level of technique and understanding. I hope this was valuable. I hope this feeds your bonsai process. To learn more, start your free trial at live.bonesaimarai.com. Mirai Live is an educational platform that has hundreds of hours of content around how you create, how you horticulturally maintain, and how you design bonsai to the best of your ability. We look forward to expanding your bonsai skills and seeing you on Mirai Live soon. Enjoy.